How was how was Cuba? Ah oh, man, I swear to God, it feels like a snapshot in time from 50 years ago. Oh um, man, one of the. I mean, obviously, you know, you'd heard about it. We we yeah, we had yeah. a. I, my introduction to Cuba was history classes yeah. and specifically communism and the revolution. Uh, Fidel and Castro like, and all exactly. that shit. Yeah. So I'm like very well versed in the political situation of Cuba and I knew that when I went there, but I did not know how it was going to be socially. And my God, man. I mean, first, the good stuff. Have you seen those videos like with those big ass cars? Like those yeah, yeah, 50 yeah, cars. Yeah, 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they have a shit ton of those everywhere and they're so fucking nice to ride. Like they're so nice to ride, like open top and just uh, cruising yeah. along those the old, and, and those old comfy. It's like a sofa seat. Yeah, you know, exactly. The one, the leather big, sofa very seat. wide cars, right? Yeah, very huge. Very Dude, there was like seven of us traveling together, and I'm sure there were times where all of us plus the driver were in like the same car, Shit. and everybody was you know sitting somewhat comfortably. Yeah, um, that was a lot of fun um, driving around those cars, and just generally it was kind of cheap. Although they have like two currencies in Cuba. Um, one of which is like for foreigners. So you, yeah, you get like a different which, currency. What do you mean? So, so, like, so um, they know automatically that, oh, this guy is from outside the country? Yeah, basically. The thing is, you you could. I, I'm pretty sure we exchange the foreign Cuban pesos for the local Cuban mm-hmm. pesos um, mm-hmm. at, at some exchange place. And they gave us some money. I'm yeah. not sure if that was okay or not. Yeah. We're supposed to convert. We're only allowed to use the Cuban convertible pesos. Yeah. So I went with people, you know, me, Somali, um, and then I went with um, people from Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, Lebanon. Oh, wow. That was wow. essentially the who's who of global terrorist Terrorist lists. people, yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine the kind of reception we got when we landed in Havana at the airport. Oh, wow. Did um, you get a strip was, session? No, no, no. They oh. weren't aggressive about it, but they were mm. very curious. It's like, how does this happen? Like, <laughs> how do you all find each other? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you're like that's Sweden, no? Yeah, yeah. you know, it's like exactly Sweden in the 21st century. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean everybody was Swedish as well, right? Um, no, they they asked us. They kind of like there was a lot of them. There were maybe five of us standing there, and there were maybe 10, 15 uh, security guys around us. But they didn't. They weren't even talking to us. You know, they were just like minding their own business. Um, and then after a while, they're like, okay, you know, weird, but hey, welcome. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, like um, I have, I have seen um, a lot of a lot of documentaries on Cuba, and I've seen the empty shops, and I've seen that, and 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 the lack of food and beverages, and uh, it's like, like it's really real up there, you know. It's like, how did you how did you guys cope with it with, with the lack of uh, amenities there? You know, I mean, people are not people are not starving. We were there for two weeks. Okay. I don't. I don't think people were starving, um, but everybody is kind of poor. Um, uh-huh. I mean, a university professor. So we rented. Um, we were staying with these. Um, I forgot what the name was. But we were staying like homestay kind of a thing. So we were staying with local Cuban families. Okay. We met this girl on the plane in uh, like at the airport in Panama City, and she had a friend who was picking her up who was German, and the girl was like I think British. And they already knew, like, they had connections and all of that. So when we landed in Havana, we had nowhere to stay. Like, we just showed up and, like, hope for the best, you know? Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we get there. We met this girl, and then her friend came, and she's like, yeah, you know, you guys can come stay in the same building. I know this other lady who's renting out rooms. So we just got in a cab and went with the them. fuck? Yeah. And the other lady, she only uh, had, that's, like... That's a bit too much of trust there, huh? Yeah, she... I mean, that's pretty much how the whole trip works. That's how it always works. Uh, you so gotta, you, you find people, and I think you can tell who you can trust, and people yeah. just kind of have, one have thing, this vibe. One thing I've heard, I can't, I can't hear enough of how friendly the people are and how, there, you yes. know, and how open they are about their culture and it's talking about... And they love Castro. Or is it... Or yeah, is it, or is I, it I mean, I mean... Uh, Yes and no. There are definitely people who believe in the revolution. Um, but then a lot of the young people who we met, you know, like maybe in clubs and bars and just hanging out on the street. Yeah. Talk people, about that part, though. People would just come talk to you. And they were not super keen on this whole ideology because they hadn't. Mm. I mean, it's not like they had to struggle or they knew what the system was like before or they were mm. under the active, you know, um, threat from the US and all of that that made it necessary or according to them necessary to build up this mm. state structure like they're not part of that they don't get it like to them it was like what the fuck so to, to, to show you how absurd it was it was this guy we met um, at one of the other hot- um, apartments houses mm-hmm. we were staying at uh, with this family like this yeah. lady who rented us a place had a son so he would take us out sometimes and uh, you know go to bars and stuff he was a musician he'd heard of YouTube 
but he had no fucking way of accessing it ever. So uh-huh. when we were leaving, he gave us like a CD. This is in 2014, by the way. I mean, who uses CDs, right? And the guy goes like, oh, I managed to make a CD. Could you put my music out on the internet? Oh, wow. So they're, they're very behind when it comes to Dude. those things. We went so- to the house. The first one we were staying at, and I asked for the Wi-Fi code. And the woman looks at me like, the what now? You know, and it's like, you know, Wi-Fi? wireless internet um, or like, oh, do I need to sit by a computer? And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know. <laughs> so, you had done no research before going to Cuba, <laughs> did you? No. Huh? D, I don't know. I don't think you know as well. There's no fucking Wi-Fi. No, but it's no, not but a dude, lot of there's things. no fucking normal internet. Yeah, so no, I thought no. there might be a computer with some dial-up somewhere. No, you had to no. go to the fucking international hotel, yeah. go sit in their lobby, and use the computer for ten dollars an hour. So you had no idea about and these. This things. shit is dial-up. I don't know. It was like kilobytes like, upload girl, speed girl, and download girl. speed. <laughs> yeah. So they're like already connected, but it takes you I don't know ten minutes to open your fucking Gmail account. You know? Yeah. Oh wow. And that's oh, like wow. worse than oh. school shit. It's worse than China. I how was the, how was the nightlife in uh, Cuba? Oh, it was fucking incredible, dude. The people, I guess, it comes from you know a lack of jobs and having shit to do. But people are out <laughs> every night. Um, yeah, it was not easy. Like you know, this professor I was telling you about, she made forty dollars a month. I mean, forty dollars a about? month. But that's a lot of money, you know. Other in other Cuba, people don't even make that much money. Yeah, forty dollars a month. Yeah, here is two two khana, two jugs of beer. <laughs> yeah. is, is it even that? Uh, no, I mean no. in the expensive place it's even more than yeah. that. No, you could get you can get four jugs of beer. Let's be honest. No, no, four jugs. What are you talking about? It's forty dollars. Two jugs. That's of like four hundred crowns, man. Two jugs. Okay, of beer. that's two jugs. Yeah, yeah, roughly. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. what that's what he got um, in a month. That's what she got in a month. Yeah, and she was well off, relatively speaking. She was baller in Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> no, so they made more money renting it to us because we paid them like what thirty dollars per room per night or something Ooh. like that. Ooh. Ooh. Exactly. So they t- treated you like kings. I mean, rel- compared to what we were paying in other places, you know, we were like, oh, damn, oh, this stuff damn. is cheap. Yeah. And in Cuba, in a time like, warp. Um, yeah. So the ladies, we gave them money, but then we found a Airbnb somewhere um, and we got a room with five beds in it for $30 mm. a night. That's so we split up. Mm. There was at this point, you know, it's like the seven of us traveling together and then these two girls, the one we met in Panama. So we went to like this other city. Um, it's called Varadero. Yeah. Yeah, don't look at me. You should <laughs> I, I I think that's what it was called. Or we went to a bunch of places. I don't know, but it was like this coastal area. Um, yeah. So there was nine of us at this point. We we're looking for a place to say same thing. You know, we just show up there and we're like asking the cab driver, you know, where we can sleep for the night. So he takes us to this place, but then these two guys were like, "Oh no, we're so above this." So four of them went to a hotel, like the international hotel down by the beach, and we, you know, the five of us took this room. So we ended up paying six dollars each, and these guys had to pay a hundred dollars for their room. Oof, man, fucking stuck and up imagine motherfuckers, that, right? I mean, imagine what 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 that extra money got you exposed to. I mean, not not just not just think of it as a room, but like. It's a culture. It's like how how they lived. You got yeah. to experience exactly. so much. Yeah. Like the lady would cook for you every morning. You wake up. She what gives are you, you talking about? She oh. gives you coffee and like bananas. I don't know how. Oh, I've heard. They, I've heard they got the best coffee. T- yeah, that, it was fucking incredible. They have man. the best they have coffee like a ton of banana and cigars. They have the best cigars. As well. Oh yes, oh, cigars. We got so many. Dude, we went to a fucking farm where they grew the tobacco and rolled the fresh cigars. Oh wow. Um, I think oh, I have a wow. picture somewhere of that. Um, so I went with Mo. You know. Um, yeah, and Jabba. some other people yeah exactly and his brother and some other friends and that was an eye opening trip so yeah the nightlife people are like out there you know a bottle of um, rum proper Havana club is yeah, like yeah, five yeah. dollars per bottle you know um, I'm sure the locals get it for less um, and everybody's about? like just <laughs> drinking on the streets um, they have like these very nice squares and everybody people randomly just meet up with people and dance on the streets everywhere oh. and that's how the night goes and it's like music and party and just chill vibe everywhere you want to get a beer from a bar you know like one of these local places well and good if not you bring your own liquor and you sit there and it's all the same to them you know 